So it was uh, definitely waterworks that night. Not a lot. Arizona of the year. I mean, <laughs> when are we filming yet? We're filming. I'm just jumping into it. We, we, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, you didn't give us a warning, bro. I was like, wait, I know. Wait, 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 wait. Natural. We're just jumping into it, man. I learned a little thing or two from Lucio. Okay. All right. Oh, there you no. go. Got you. LS3 podcast. Go check it out. Um, anyway, 2022 Scare Zone of the Year. You guys just came back for blood, didn't you? Hell yeah. Man. Hey, uh, I mean, listen, Carnival takes it in 2021, right? Uh, Gore in 20s was the runner up by like literally a hair because it was the brand new zone. Them two were going back and forth. I remember seeing yeah. that every single weekend. Uh, Carnival won 2021, but Goring 20s, I, I gotta be 100% honest with you guys, Goring 20s was probably my favorite scare zone this year, because of, like, it was like, year one was like, we're figuring out the story, we're like, we're, you know, we're getting a hang of it, year two was like, this story's our bitch now. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> and you can see it from, like, <clears throat> every character from, like, last year and then this year, everyone knew, like, how to interact this yeah. year because last year they didn't really like it was new characters so it's like interacting was like totally different so now this year whoever the you know the people who were there last year from this year knew how to interact know how to do the scares and then all the you know us like the rookies to the zone just jumped in along and followed their lead which you know all that energy kind of just built up throughout the year and it was one hell of a year so good. Um, yeah, man. Let's go around the table. I mean, Joe, would you? How'd you feel about this year, man? This was this was e- easily like the for some reason too, and this goes across the board to all haunts I've been to. 2022 was the year for haunts, uh, for a big time comeback. How did you feel energy wise going into the season? You know, especially when after winning the Golden Haunt Award, man. Bro, I had so much fun this season. Coming from Ghost Town in 2019, it's so different. It's such a different like zone different monster than what they do over there and what they do is banging like it's awesome i love ghost town it's dark it's easy to get those scares they work super hard but goring 20s is just a non-stop party i love it like you like juke them you scare them and then you invite them to dance and then you just like <laughs> vibe with the people it's like a good mixture of the scare and the interaction of the guest that comes through and you get really cool ones and you get you know you're <laughs> schmucks or whatever but i felt really really good about this season i had a lot of fun more fun than i thought i could ever have at something like this it was choice <laughs> yeah definitely uh mike what about you man coming in as a rookie this this season for goring 20s what did you think about the uh the the overall energy man i mean everyone brought it this year well this being my first year of doing this ever like this was an amazing experience. I can't even stress enough. Like, would I do this again next year? Definitely. Like this, this was super, super different. Like I didn't think I was going to do something like this, but I've always wanted to try doing it ever since 2018, 2019. But I was always kind of, you know, scared, nervous that I wouldn't, you know, make it into a spot or whatever. You know, I didn't know how it works. But, um, you know, I didn't think I was going to, you know, do as good as I wanted to be, you know, back then. But now, you know, auditioning and making it in the streets for the very first time, first year doing this, it kind of just blew my mind. And, you know, the interactions like, you know, what Joe was saying, the interactions with people is just it's amazing. It's great. I love it. Um, Again, it's definitely something that I'd love doing again. Um, and yeah, and I enjoy, I really enjoyed working with everybody. Cast A, cast B, still either way, I still enjoyed it and I loved it. Nice. Yeah, that, that, that's really awesome to hear, uh, Mike, that you really enjoyed your time here, especially as your first season, a little bit nervous coming into the season. Um, but uh, from what I can tell, the Goring is one big family and one big unit, um, and it's an absolute unit. Um, and one of the absolute units out there is Cheeto. Uh, how did you feel coming into this season? Honestly, when I got the call that I was going to Goring 20s as a grease monkey, I was a little bit nervous. I was a little bit nervous because it's not just, you know, a scare zone. It's an interactive scare zone. So I was more nervous on how am I going to interact with this character? 
you know, obviously I could, you know, look at uh, the previous Grease Monkeys, you know, the previous year, but I wanted to put my own twist because I'm really good with the scares, but I wasn't going to, I wasn't sure how, how I was going to uh, interact with people. So after, you know, opening night of Associates Night, you know, I was going hard and every time, you know, I would take a break, that's when I would interact. So that's originally how I, you know, started interacting with people. And I thought it was actually pretty cool because you're not doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know, scaring, 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 scaring. You get to make people laugh, smile, even mad of, of some of the things that we used to say, you know, kind of low key. Uh, but just seeing everybody's characters develop throughout the year made me have a big smile on my face once we won Golden Haunt. And I think we really deserved it, which is why this is like the first year I actually cried out in that zone, <laughs> seeing everybody so like in a happy mood and what we you know, had the whole crowd with us cheering us on. It was kind of like not only us were like family, but the crowd was also part of our family representing us and the uh, the G20 family. And honestly, I couldn't be more happy to be part of G20 and have it my first scare zone and street zone uh, of my Knott's career. And I don't know where I'm going to be next year, but I'm definitely going to be at the farm. Uh, yeah, we love to hear that, uh, and we're excited to see what that next year brings. Um, just backing up here just a little bit, uh, this question specifically for Joe and Mike. Uh, Cheeto just uh, mentioned that he was a Grease Monkey. What two characters did you all play out there uh, in the Gorin 20s? Gotcha. Um, Go ahead, Joe. I was a, I was a Newsy. Newsy, all right, for sure. I was, I was a Gen Runner. Gen Runner, all right, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at a zone like the Goring 20s when it when it got introduced in 2021, you know, there was this whole mystery behind, you know, this 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 elixir that's that's like killing people. And, and, and there's a lot of evil behind this, this like kind of this backstory, this liquor and stuff during the prohibition, which was something that was huge in American history uh, as far back, you know, with gangsters and whatnot. So I, I think mm -hmm. the good, the you know, the, the awesome blend between this, especially me being like a fan of the of the gangster era and whatnot of the twenties and stuff, was kind of mixing the two worlds of haunt with with history and and, and the gangster mm -hmm. era. You know, that's always a fascinating twist and whatnot. You know, kind of working within that world, what was the hardest thing to 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 really try to bring to life to give the guests the absolute best experience of them living in the twenties? Uh, you want to start, Mike? Or no, go ahead. Joe, you want to start or you want me to go? Go for it, bud. So you said the most challenging thing, right? Yeah. To, like, bring to life. Uh, I think the more challenging thing is, um, yeah, these characters you kind of have to learn. You have to know, like, the backstory kind of. I had to Google and watch movies about my character kind of to, like, to make sure when I was interacting with guests, it just, you know, it made sense. So not like i was scaring you know normally like how you know a normal grease monkey should you know i was portraying more of an angry character out there um obviously fixing cars uh but i think more of it is like to keep to keep the interactions going within the 1920s because obviously you could kind of uh stray away from that a little bit throughout the season um because i mean I'm going to be honest, there was some stuff I kind of like rolled away from the 1920s just for like a little bit. So just staying as that one Pacific character in that era is probably like the hardest thing just because it's so hard. You got everyone, you know, flashing cameras, talking about certain things. And I don't know everything about the 1920s. So, <laughs> so I think that was probably like the hardest thing. I think the only thing you really got to know about the 1920s is Charlie Chaplin. Fact. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's it. What about you, Joe? What was, most, what was the most challenging thing to, to, to kind of keep that illusion alive for the Goring 20s? Yeah, the challenge was definitely like protecting that world that they created. You want to be like period accurate to what they made, but you also want to scare and have fun and like breathe your own life into it and stuff. Um, I actually like on my phone created like a list of 20s slang to just like use. I ended up using, I don't know, maybe two or three words because our zone lead is a huge history buff. So like every night 
he'd give us something new to work with. He's like, your insult of the night is Bozo or like it's Maroon or like throw some random stuff out there. And that really, really helped keep that world they created alive. Because as soon as you walk into memory lane, you're in a whole nother world until you leave. It's like every every zone, honestly, every zone is its own little pocket world. And you want to do your best to like, like add to it or you know just keep it afloat you don't want to break it yeah definitely michael what about you man what was the most challenging part in, as a rookie trying to figure all this out well <laughs> well i mean like like cheeto said like he had to kind of look up his character thankfully i was given a character description on the first day but no um, tell, him, tell him you came late also i did come late i did come a we week played. late I did come in week two because um, I was still, you know, doing my HR training, all that stuff. So, you know, right after HR training the next day, they put me in without any scare school or without any of that stuff. They just put me right in. Nice. So nice. Um, that was that was kind of, you know, shocking, I guess, but yet exciting, but nerve wracking and all these other emotions. But um, honestly, the most challenging thing for me precisely was probably trying to figure out an accent for my character like honestly i would try to figure out more accents of my character you know i'd kind of copy some of the you know some of the little accent sounds with um my other gen runner partner which was freddie um i'd kind of try using his uh, you know voice a little bit tried using you know mixture mixing it with my voice with his voice and kind of other stuff so i've been trying to like you know try to get my character accent up there um honestly what was surprising was that i got the character part down like the the movement and everything i kind of got that down in a snap so that was that was kind of cool i didn't think i was gonna do it at first but you know first try i went at it i went out there and you know, my team or our team lead was very impressed with me the first day I was out in the streets. So, you know, um, but I think it was more of my accent because, um, you know, everyone has a different accent and everyone uses different accents. You know, might as well just try to explore that a little bit. So I think that was just my main thing, mostly. Yeah, no, accents, I think, play a huge role um, into the 1920s because obviously the way that they're speaking in the 1920s is a lot different than how we speak now in 2022 because yeah. uh, we all have, you know, it's it's really developed. Um, and then the way that we sound and the tone that we use is quite different. Um, one thing I think that made the Goring 20s extra special for me was the guest interactions because um, I thought it was a very immersive experience in addition to, like, every character out there was very much on their toes and adequate i think with their improv skills mm. um do you all have a favorite interaction from this past season <laughs> there's like so much i mean i had to pick one like there's so many bits hard. that everyone has done and i've seen but i feel like mine uh, i th- think mine would be because it felt like it felt like a netflix series at, at the end of the day because i don't know if you guys know <laughs> i don't know if you guys know aiden do you guys have you guys heard of aiden uh, Aiden, Aiden, my buddy boy. Aiden's yeah, so adventure. it's like a little little kid with his mom that always goes oh, to yeah. every zone. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen a, I've seen this post on Instagram. Okay, yeah. So they God, post inter- yeah. So they post interactions, and I was like, you know, everyone was doing their bits. I did some bits with him, and then it came across of a post that they posted that said, "Oh, don't tell Gore." This came from the Hollows. Don't tell Goring Twenties that we cut his hair. So I was like, okay, let me, let me start some banter with us in the hollows. So I, you know, came up to Aiden with um, uh, my fellow uh, mobster. And I said, do you know, like, I was like, do you know what the hollows done? And I said, you know, I started a whole thing about how, how the hollows cuts his hair and he doesn't let us. (laughs) So we're kind of like, oh you're part of the hollows team now and he was like he was like no no i'm not part of the hollows team and then (laughs) you know sooner or later we start giving aiden like items to give to the hollows (laughs) you know there's one item i didn't think he would do it but i told him to draw draw a piece of paper hollows with the x on it and going 20s with like a heart and he did it yeah he did it he posted it 
So it all started like there where we, and then Hollow started, you know, giving us stuff. Um, and it's funny because before we even clock in, like for like even going into the park, we're right next to each other. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so we're like, do you get that message from Aiden? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it kept going throughout the whole, the rest of the season. It was pretty fun. It was pretty that fun. Was doing so that was so fun. I mean, it, it's fun when, like, you mentioned interactions like that. Those are absolutely some of my favorites because I remember just going through the zone, like, the nights that I went um, and having interactions with all you guys. Like, I, I, I just the, – the things that we would do. Cheeto always wanted a, a car, and we were talking about <laughs> cars all the time. And then, and then Cheeto, like, teamed up on Sammy because he wasn't doing his job. You know, I mean, just walking around and watching everyone, you know, interact with everyone. You know, I would stand there for, like, a, you know, a few minutes at a time and make my rounds and just stand there and watch everything and just really soak in the zone. Because yeah. I don't think – Everything ever... was just so improv, like, oh, it just was. right on the spot. Oh, yeah. It was so amazing, man, and, and – that's one of my that's one of my favorites, you know, just to, to walk through that zone and know that I'm being told a story. I don't know what's uh -huh. getting tonight, but you know, it's <laughs> you know so, I mean that was the best part, you know. And, and <coughs> you know, I, I think a lot of it too is like if it you know it's it's cool to capture things on camera and all that, but I, I, I wanna say the best things are not meant to be captured. You know what I mean? Like the best things are just meant to live up here. And there was a lot of moments, too, where, like, I was like, oh, I wish I had my camera. But at the same time, it's like, it's good to just have that one for myself. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, yep. and, and I love capturing things on camera. Anyone who knows me knows that I could spend hours in zones just filming people and stuff. And it's it's hilarious. Um, what was some of like, uh, you know, w with that being said, with photographers, with, with, you know, videographers and stuff, what was some of the 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 coolest things i mean that people have you know specifically pointed you guys out i know there was a, a lot of photos there's a is that a puppy is that a cat that's no, no, a kitty it's a kitty, kitty. <laughs> big cool. desmond look at that look at a kitty, kitty <laughs> on camera that just boosted you your... this podcast like 500 more views right there you there want you go the same bubba um <laughs> 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 But it, 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 what was some of like the coolest things that you guys saw of your guys? If you guys saw any of yourselves, you know, from photography or anything like it, that, must be a cool feeling to know that people are coming to take pictures of you and, and to you know capture yeah. you on film, just to you know have that as an archive for like pretty much history to look back at. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, was a lot. Um, there were a lot of photographers. A lot. Um, I feel like the most frequent was Saki Grim Grinning Ghosts follow on Instagram. She got yeah. great photos. Oh, oh yeah. Um, she even had like a Kickstarter, like a GoFundMe to like fun trips back to Not Scary Farm to take yeah. pictures of talent. It was really, really cool. Um like one of her photos is my profile photo right now. Like she gets amazing, amazing stuff of every single zone. Oh, yeah. Um and of course, there's, you know, like the people, you know, like your friends or your girlfriend coming through snapping photos. Um, Chris Rogers photography. He's got a he got some good ones, too. It's so cool seeing what you do kind of just like made into a memory you can have forever like that. You're obviously going to have them forever, but like immortalized so you can see it. That's really cool. I liked a lot of the videos of our last night because like we were all just. Last 45 minutes, we weren't even scaring. We were just no. all hugging, loving each other, getting crying. Guests, it was like the end of the, crying. It was, like, it was like the final moments of like every freaking Super Bowl when it comes down to the final seconds and everyone just stops playing because they know they won. Literally. Football, you know? It's like when the crowd storms the field and you just yep. get to like yeah. celebrate with everybody and like – it was just awesome. I know I got I didn't get to see it in person, but luckily my friend uh, dented. Oh, he he got to capture all of it on camera. And yeah, you would have cried with us, man. Oh, I know I would have. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he would have. I can confirm he would have cried. He's a crybaby. <laughs> hey, bro. That's just crazy. He's got I emotions. Haunt. I love haunt. Bro. He's got emotions. Oh yeah. No, it, it would have been a beautiful moment because you know it's something like I said last year it was neck and neck with you in Carnival, and this year. You guys were out for blood, and you guys got the blood, and you freaking like yeah. I said, you made this zone your bitch. You really did. You took <laughs> yeah, we did, and you fucking were like, here's what we got for 2022 plus some, you know. And and like I said, this was probably my favorite scare zone this year. I mean, I love all the scare zones. Don't get me wrong, but this one 
from the start when I started going to you know, I went on play preview night opening night um that weekend went a few times in October like every time I went through there I was always like treated like amazing just like interaction yeah. was great everyone that I knew were were great and I was <clears> like, <throat> man you did such a good job I was handing out stickers to everyone because everyone was doing a good job I'm like this is for you this yeah this is for you this is for you it started from orientation from our cast lead saying that we need to up it this year and, you know, being scarier. And then I seen it from scare school. I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is going to be a great cast this year. And I can't wait to like start the season. And now it's look, now it's over. I mean, that, that I think the most perfect kind of scenic design for that thing is when they added that pizza shop. Because it just gives it more of a yes. still now. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels yes. like, like it could be like easy, like, like an industrial factory or something like that you'd see in the 20s. With the br- the and their food is actually really good. Have you guys eaten there? It's really oh, good. Nah, not bad. I've eaten there before. It's, it's pretty good. Amazing. Their pasta, though. Pasta, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was a little, man. Yeah. I was a little bit worried at the start of it with the pizzeria because that sign is so bright. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Ra- uh, Rachel, one of the jazz singers in the zone, was telling me like that corner by the train tracks used to be the darkest spot in the zone. Now it's the brightest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, like... it's super bright. <laughs> uh, no, I think... was... Go for Cheetah. No, no, you're good. You're good. I'm, I'm going to change the direction of this conversation, so you can go back on the pizza. Oh no, I was like... just going to say the amount of drinks because of that pizza place that were spilled were amazing. <laughs> for a spilled drink. Hell yeah. Yeah, the other the other thing I like that they did this season outside of you know, obviously adding that pizzeria was super awesome. But adding those shows with the jazz music I thought was super cool Mm. and clutch. Uh, yeah. Because not only did it uh, add more ambiance um, and help tell more story, um, I just thought it was as a as a musician, I thought it was really sick to be able to hear jazz music as you're walking through there, um, as well as it added another layer because you all were, would be dancing and having a really grand old time. Um, did you did you guys find a way to like get people that were kind of hesitant to dance to dance with you all? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. you could talk to them too. They're like the Joe, Joey's. Joey's the the main guy. I got yeah, everybody we did. into. Um, part of like the fun of this zone, I think, was getting guests so involved when the band was playing, because like you can get them to dance on any of the songs. Be like, I would always walk around, look somebody in the eye, and go, "It's a party. Why aren't you dancing?" And I would like <laughs> that was my scare. I'd like scream in the face and be like, "Start dancing!" Come on! Um, but there were two songs specifically that got the crowd so hype. One of them, what used to be my least favorite song out of the entire set, because it's so hard to dance to. And then Court, one of our gin runners, invented just off the of his head what the band named the Tiger Death Crawl. And it's just the creep down the street. Yep. Just on beat with everybody. And like, he's cast B. But Cat Day man. did it too. Every time I was doing it, I'm like, copyright, Court Soto, <laughs> going down. <laughs> yeah, we, we love Court here on the channel because uh, yeah, we had yeah. talked with him, when it, I believe, his first season when he was at Waxworks. And he was an absolute legend, and he's continuing to be an absolute legend. So we really do admire his work and his effort to make the characters. Um, another thing we do like to focus on on the podcast is the actor behind the character. Um, specifically how you all got into the haunt industry. Um, so Ooh. how, what, what inspired you all to, uh, get to scary farm? Um, and like, what were your earliest memories of like haunts and, and scary things? Joe, you want to start this one? And then I'll go sure. next. All right. Yeah, I got you. Um, so I have a theater background. Um, I've been doing like musicals and plays since I was like eight. I ended up going to college for it. I got a BFA in musical theater. Um, and then in 2019, my girlfriend said that she always wanted to work, not scary farm. I had never been because I was candidly, I was a little bitch and I was really scared of things. Um, (laughs) so I never wanted to do those things. Um, and so going from never being a guest right into the talent portion of it, it just felt like another show. Just, you know, you suit up, you get your makeup on, you go out there, you perform, take your breaks when you need and then you know go about your business it's just it's just business um but like 
finding the character in the business was a lot, a lot of fun. Cause like you can use what you've had and just throw it out onto the street. And it's a lot of improv too, which is something I've been doing for a while. So if a guest ever got mad, I could easily flip it and just like start making them happy with some, make them laugh. If I could make them laugh 70% of the time, I was good. I don't mean to scare. I made them laugh. Whose line is it anyway? Am I right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, cause see, me and Sammy have both have theater backgrounds, and that's the, that's the one thing I tell him every single year is this is essentially – my mom's like, why do you like going to that? Because I'm like, it's live theater. It's essentially live, live theater. theater. You're just people getting scared. scared. Yeah, that's and, it. and people yeah. getting scared. You're just adding the scare. But it's live theater. You're all, everyone in every zone and every maze is telling a story. And it's That's like, why there's, like, nothing like it, you know? <clears throat> this is just more, yeah. like, on a more in-depth and in-your-face kind of level. But And there's no scripts. Absolutely. There's no scripts. No, nah, it's all in <laughs> The only script that you get is what the zone theming is and what the character is. Other than that, the rest is on you. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. I mean, that's great. What about you? What about you, Tito? What, what was your uh, background going into? Uh, well, I definitely didn't um, come from a theater background. I grew up playing sports, so... Haunt was never in my blood, but when I went my very first time in fourth grade, I always remember this moment. I went through uh, Fog Alley. I didn't know that at the time. I just saw buildings with like fog. So I was going <laughs> through the, the Fog Alley and I hear a slider. My first time ever hearing a slider, I was so damn scared. I ran through and I got chased by the slider when they, you know, when they were used to like chase a little bit more than they used to now, but after that moment, you know, and going through the mazes, terrified. I was like, okay, I love this place. I didn't end up going later until probably high school. It took me a while because I never had good grades. And my dad was like, oh, you could only go if you had good grades. <laughs> but I was, then I got into like the YouTube part of it where like I started watching YouTube about the haunt, like backstage behind the scenes and like walkthroughs. And I ended up rolling on someone's YouTube where they did behind the scenes. And I saw someone out, out that like looked familiar and ended up being one of my close family members, like God brother. So I, you know, asked him, I'm like, oh, how do I audition and, you know, become an actor here? Cause I would really want to be it. And he was like, you could apply now. And there's still, this was the year 2018. So this was the year when Affected was there. So it was like the last two weeks I ended up coming, the last two weeks, and ended up getting into Infected. So technically that was kind of like my first year. I don't really count it. But ever after, ever since um, Infected, I was going to be here for the next, I don't know how long until I die. <laughs> till my body, Until my body gives up. So, you know, 2019, 2021, I was in Paranormal, uh, the show Demon, and then now. Wow, year for Paranormal, buddy? Damn. Yeah, and guess what? Last year we won Maze of the Year. This year you won now I'm now the Street Zone of the Year. Some so it's like back to two time back to back. Back to back. Hey, yes. yo. <laughs> so, like yeah. hell yeah. I mean, honestly, Haunt, Haunt is like – a fun really fun hobby and i wish it went longer than it, you know than it goes my body says it you know it should take a break but mentally i'm like i could keep going i could keep going <laughs> uh, man. what about you mike what was what was the introduction to your your haunt career and what got you where you're at now well um see i only did about one year of theater but that was probably like the best year of my life in theater. I mean, I had such an amazing time. I learned how to dance. Um, I learned, but I mean, I knew how to dance since preschool. I did tap dancing and jazz and all of that in preschool. So I've been doing pretty much dancing for about six years, but I learned how to dance even more with musicals and other performances that I kind of didn't know how to do, but you know, I still had that dancing background. So um, honestly, um, it, the thing was, in 2018, 2019, I really did want to try out, but again, I was kind of afraid that I wasn't gonna, you know, like be the best, or I was, I was, I was kind of afraid that I was gonna, you know, I'm not sure, like maybe not have a 
like the time that I wanted to have or something like that, you know, some, some just something like that. But um, honestly, it's, I mean, I just kind of tried out because I have a friend that's been working at Knott's Berry Farm for the regular season and for the scary farm season. She's been working there for about 13 years now. And um, she's, she's actually gained my confidence a lot. So without her, you know, I wouldn't have had the guts to try out an audition. So props to, and props look at to that. Got you in the boring 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boring 20s on a rookie year. Do you believe that? I mean, it's, it's, you rarely hear those rookies make it onto the yeah. and he did it. That's, that's the thing. When I got the call on the phone saying that I made it into his scare zone, the person that was telling me that I made it was very impressed in her voice. And she said that it's very rare that a rookie that gets into his scare zone first try. So I'm starting to see more now today. Um, and that's a good sign because I always like to see what fresh blood comes into the zones, whether they've been working the event for years or in mazes or other zones and stuff. I always like to see who comes next. I mean, uh, I, oh, yeah. I, I feel like every year somebody adds something to the table and, and it's something that we've either seen, but this person does it even better or something we've never seen before. And it's something that's just, it's added to the table that, that, that really, brings up the whole uh you know morality of the zone and whatnot i mean it, it's really mm -hmm. every year coming in wondering who's going to be who's going to be next you know what i mean like who who are we who should we interview next man because i that's the thing about us we love telling people stories we love bringing them on we love to hear how they got interested in all this and and where th their mindset was throughout the season it's something very rarely that you get to see uh, a behind the scenes look of what the person is behind the, the the mask or the or the makeup or the you know the monster overall so i mean mm -hmm. it's, it's just been honestly i have to say the uh best season since i want to say 2019 for us you know in the next couple of years after 2019 you know we had the pandemic which kind of you know shut everything down yeah 2021 the comeback of of haunts and it kind of it really you know came back you know the energy was there people were excited to be back it was just taking some getting used to to, to get back on track i feel like this year it, it would there was something that clicked in everyone's head that was just like oh no we're not only back we're back with a vengeance yes yeah, sir and uh, <laughs> felt the energy night one you you felt it night one between both guests and 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 all the monsters there you felt it i felt that all across the board the energy was was there and and i was just happy to be there it, it really made me happy to be there looking to the 50th mm -hmm. i mean this i'm hearing a lot of things you know don't know if any of them are oh. true but you know i'm hearing a lot of a lot of things specifically a lot of names wanting to return come out and play mm -hmm. the last time before they hang it up for for, for good um, that's what i've been hearing what's 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 your guys's game plan do, do we do, are we trying to go somewhere else or are we wanting to continue the legacy of, of goring 20s and, and continue to build up those characters like how is that looking mindset wise like i know it's already too a little too early to think about but it might not be early enough you know? yeah yeah I kind of have, like, I gotta have something. Um, I was, I was really, I, literally, I was thinking about this for a long time. I was thinking about this probably for like the last, <coughs> the last week or two of haunt of, you know, what am I gonna, what the hell am I gonna do next year? So, um, I've been really thinking about this a lot. But for my case, for the fiftieth, yes, I have heard from veterans that apparently people that have been doing this for like. 16 years are coming back after 16 years ago they've left and they're coming back for one last run so pretty much like you said you know about them coming for the last run so i heard about that and um and i you know i've heard stuff about you know re-auditioning and stuff like that because of that or something like that so i've heard a lot of a lot of things but myself what I hope to accomplish next year is to be the same person, the same character as, you know, I was this year. So I'd love to keep my gin runner position, definitely. And um, if that doesn't work out, you know, I do have other goals. Um, you know, Forsaken Lake or Ghost Town would be, you know, pretty cool to do. Um, you know, Kyle, the other Kyle, Smiley, um, and uh, Lepew, you know, they came from forsaken so same with Lumi. 
So, mm -hmm. you know, they they all went from Forsaken. So, you know, they and they've made good points. And so is Jenny and Andrew, you know, the preacher people, you know, they uh, they were telling me good points saying that they can put you anywhere. You know, it doesn't matter if you were in a scare zone the first time doesn't matter. Like they could put you anywhere. So, you know, they, what pretty much what they told me, all of them told me was be ready. Just be ready for anything. And, you know, if they put you in a different spot, whether it's a maze or a scare zone, just be ready for it. So that's basically what I'm ready for. So, you know. Gamora, honestly. I'm sorry, what was Gamora that? Sick. I said I wouldn't mind to go play in Grimoire. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be Loki. Really hey, Grimoire won it, won it this know, year, too. So. Maze of the year. Uh, Chia, what about you, man? Looking towards the 50th, what, what's, the, what's the thought process on that? I mean, there's a lot, to be honest, because I... I feel like the 50 is going to be an amazing year. And there's a lot that Knotts is going to bring to the table, I hope. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, as of a goring 20s, I don't mind if they put – if I go there next year, if they're like, oh, we want you back, I would love to, uh, you know. But if it was my decision, I do want to open the new zone and see us. Because what I've been hearing, I've been like, mm, that sounds like it would be pretty cool if it actually happens. Because I've been hearing a lot of rumors of, like, you know, what it might be, you know, what direction they're going to take it. Uh, but the reason, not just because it's a new zone, but it's a darker zone. I want to see what I can do with just in the dark, you know. Um, and obviously the ground is really good with sliding. I ended up sliding the apprenticeship this year, Butter. Thursdays and Sundays. It will, our ground was all right, but hollows like or CS ground is, yeah, all butter ground. Yeah. So it would be cool to be <clears throat> sliding there my first year of sliding fully every single day. Um, but if not that, Ghost Town, I've always wanted to go to Ghost Town, but. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I don't know. It's like like what Mikey said, anything could happen. You know, we don't have control over it. It's kind of like we have to wait and see what, you know, how closer it gets to, you know, the, the 50th. And I probably have my mind more, you know, set up. But I'm excited. I'm excited. There's a lot. There's a lot. Ex there's a lot of uh, expectation next year. Joe, Later. my fellow thespian. Where are we going with the 50th, I mean, man? 50th is something that's on the radar for sure. I'm definitely <clears> planning <throat> on coming back unless, you know, life happens and I end up not in California, but I plan on staying for now. Um, for the 50th, I can see myself uh, getting getting a rig and practicing some sliding in the off season, maybe jump onto that train a little bit because I saw the apprenticeship a little bit. Um, Cast A apprentices slid during Cast B's set, but sometimes, you know, I'd jump out, team slide a little bit, like Kyle, uh, Larry, one of our other newsies, and it just looked like too much fun. I'm like, that looks like fun. I just didn't have the cash to, like, drop on the setup this year. But if I, you know, save it up, that's another story. Um, I definitely want to end up back in Goring or... I, you know, I don't want to betray my brothers in going or anything, but after this season, the only other zone I could see myself wanting to do is Carnival oh. or the new one. Cause like I rolled through as a guest and they're just having like just as much fun as we are. It's just so much chaos. And like that one is, you can literally say anything within reason literally. without getting like a gag order or whatever, but like you can kind zone, of get away with stuff there. Oh, absolutely. Like, the stuff I see them do, I'm like... Oh, jeez. Go. Only we can do that in Goring, but we can't. Exactly. And, like, we find <laughs> our own way to do it. We find our own, like, unique, you know, method. Oh, yeah, we I'm definitely do. It. <laughs> that we do. Well, you do. Trust me. Um, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> I've heard some stuff. I've heard, oh, yeah. heard some stuff like that. But, yeah, I'd love to go back to Goring if they gave me the opportunity. On the audition sheet this year, I said... I either want to go back to Ghost Town or Goring 20s because um, do you guys know Talia? Yes. 
Um, she yeah. was one of the ingenues this year in Cast D. She was like one of my mentors in Ghost Sound. And when I went as a guest in 21, she's like, you should join us like right now. We need people. I'm sure if you like send an email, you can get on right now. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't have the time for it, but maybe next year and next year happened. Thank you. Made it in. Yeah, we there love, you we, go. We're big fans of Talia. We, we uh, yeah, really enjoyed her in 2019 in uh, Ghost Town with her the character. Chicken. Chick- we loved the chickens. We spent far too much time just watching them play in Kmart <laughs> uh, in Ghost Town. Uh, they would even and- get to the point where they would literally kick people off of our bench so we can go sit there. Perfect. <laughs> That's how much they saw us on a weekly basis. Yeah, no, uh, we would just, we would have a very good time just watching them because they we had some of the most fun and creative scares for it, like not being able to like talk to guests or if they did talk, they had to do it in their character, which was super fun to watch. Um, so real big fans of Talia. Um, yeah, um, speaking of like character and character decisions, um, what do you think changed from like the beginning of your season to the end of this, end of your season uh, with your characters? Hmm. hmm. I definitely got a lot meaner because <laughs> I was listening to, you know, uh, our mobster Clayton and, you know, the other grease monkeys that were here last year, but they were in streets for like 10 plus years. The stuff that they were saying, I was kind of like building off of what they were saying. So I think it was more of interacting wise was more of a, like a meaner tone, meaner, things within <laughs> within the zone so if i, I feel like my scares though were like I, I i think i added something with my scares i added do i started doing kicks at people that would get people like to like flinch really hard <laughs> and you would have to see it to like understand of how, how i did it but joey knows how i did it i just did it <laughs> but Joe, you want to? Yeah. Um, it's funny because I feel like I'm the opposite from you, honestly. I started out with all the aggression that I learned from Ghost Town because that's all I knew. So I'm just like yelling at people like, get out of here, like flinching at them and stuff. And then as the zone like evolved and like went through the six weeks, I felt myself just kind of like relaxing into it and just being part of the world and being like, hey, like, come dance with me or like need a shave because like i had a little straight razor with me so i'm like let me shave you up a little bit and i'd like stop them dead in their tracks and like make them make their group wait while i like fake shaved them and stuff but like i felt myself like wash off the like aggression of it and kind of just enjoy the fun of it and like they will flinch at almost anything you throw at them I literally just said, whoa, for a lot of my scares. And they were all like, ah! <laughs> That kills me when you do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you listen, like, I, I can keep it. I, I just, I absolutely had a freaking blast every time I went through. Um, I'm glad that I've, I'm now getting to meet more of you uh, outside of the, the characters and stuff. Um, I know I had a few interactions with you guys here and there. Um, the one person that really was kind of the the introduction for me to like really want to be in the zone more was um a good friend of ours, um Ronnie, uh very good friend of ours, and she was the reason why I wanted to be around the zone more, and because I was around the zone more, I got to see you guys and I got to see other things. I mean, I I, I especially love this was a really good touch to the story was uh, at the top of, I think, every, like, 15 of every hour, you guys would drop dead. Mm. Um, that was cool. I never got yeah. to see that, and I got to see that twice this year. Um, nice. So that was a lot of fun to see that. I mean... <laughs> it's sometimes cool. Do you, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Say, cool. Do you guys, like, when you're doing that, do you try to make each other laugh or something? Like, to break sometimes, you? literally, when the clock struck, so in my head, I'm just like, like son of a bitch i don't want to do this yeah no it's not even just that because like we've been walking all night and like like just falling down to the floor it's kind of like getting back up is like the worst part i'm like sometimes i go down i'm not getting up (laughs) no yeah yeah stay there just lean against the wall it's like what are you doing i'm dead 
Yeah. Oh yeah. That, 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 that was fun. Yeah. Uh, Our cast lead wouldn't be happy with that. You I, I aim for a wall. Oh, dude, I was laughing. I mean, just to see this and, and everything. I mean, and and I love it when you. This was really funny to me when people would would give out fake passwords to the speakeasy. I yeah. Mean, they really. I mean, obviously the gag was there <coughs> the first year. You know, people actually thought there was a speakeasy, and then there were some people this year that still didn't know there was actually not a speakeasy. And uh, I would, I was literally just filming it for the content because I wanted to be like interactive. So I was like, I need the wait. No, the speakeasy exists. It exists. It exists. You know what? People oh, started believing it. the mailbox. You guys know the secret doors in the mail, the mail stand, the new stand. That's right. There is. Can, oh, you to so that? we. <laughs> You're not wait, supposed we, to. Wait, are we? Are we? I don't know if we. we I don't know if we can say that. Don't get yourself in Jacob, trouble. Jacob, Jacob, get mad at us. Redacted. Redacted. Well, let's, let's uh, moving on. Well, we, well we, okay. Let's just say this. We put. They can neither confirm know. nor deny. <laughs> neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> my lawyer is not present. I can't answer this question. No. Okay. <laughs> can't answer so, my question either. There would be Doink and Booner. Shout out to them. They're the ones who started the whole come here to the mail stand type of vibe. So we would call people over and I would just be standing there. They're like standing on the line. Don't pass the line. They would knock. And then Doike Boomer would answer the door and open it. They're like, what's your name? And, you know, they would say Kayla. They're like, no, what's your real name? They would say Kayla again. And then you'll see Boomer. He's like inside, but he sticks his head out real quick and says, that's a stupid name, and then shuts the door so fast. <laughs> and then I'm like, "Sorry, you rejected next." <laughs> I love that. That's it was hilarious. just awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of bits that I happen in that mailbox. Like Instagram videos of like people of you guys going in and out of the, the stands and stuff, which I thought. Oh was, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Because there was a lot of bits that happened in there. There's so much more stuff. <laughs> sometimes, stuff sometimes when. You know, it's a, a funny thing that I use that newsstand for, and it's the funniest shit in the world. Like, when when the clock chimes for the death scene, I'm like, when I don't feel like dying, I'm like, no, yes. no, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. So I run into the newsstand, I just <laughs> shut the door. Hide. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I just pretend I'm like, like, I just act like, oh my god, I'm not trying to die again, I'm not trying to die. I just run to the stand, I just <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. I was kindly given this. Uh, during the run of Goring Twenties, yeah, oh, uh, there you go. From the Goring Twenties, there you go. That's a souvenir for you. It is a very big souvenir. Uh, a friend owed it, owed me one. Uh, I was trying nice. to buy a cigar from her last year. She didn't sell me one, so I bought one from her this year. Well, oh, there you go, souvenir. There you go. Souvenir. There you go. Uh, Did you get that in the last night, or no? I actually got this. We got this opening weekend. Oh, oh opening nice. weekend. Cause I, I I had messaged her that night before. I'm like you know I still haven't got my cigar and she's like you coming tomorrow I'm like yeah she's like I'll get you if you if you would have went to Arizona we would have given you something else <laughs> money the money was probably blood money, money. I don't know whatever props that these everyone else has I was just glad to give everyone stickers okay that was that was the best part <laughs> yeah. oh yeah a black and white one they I I don't have any more of those so those are limited edition I still have a ton of red and black ones because they came the week of so. Yeah, I got those stickers. Yeah, those are fun. Um, gentlemen, oh my god. I, uh, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of the, this entire cast, but you guys did a phenomenal job this year. You guys earned that victory for uh, you know, the 2022 season. You guys showed every other zone that you know you were that close to winning in 2021. Let's win 2022, and you won 22, rightfully so. Yeah, I'm right. Uh, rightfully so. Uh, and respect to like all other zones, all other zones. Oh, 100%. You know? Dude, I, oh, yeah. The event around was just, I mean, I was having such a blast going through. I, I loved it. Everyone was so, so amazing. The, the yeah, man. Is, is home. You know, we love coming home. We love sitting on our bench. We love eating our funnel cakes. We love drinking our from our souvenir cups. We love, you know, getting those late yeah. cheese. I mean, just to sit there and watch you guys. I, th I think the last night we went, me and my girlfriend literally sat in Carnival with panda express and i literally looked at every monster that passed by i'm like entertain me i'm eating <laughs> entertain me, I'm eating. dinner and a show and lucio was like the first one to come up and he was like and in character he's like i got you and he fucked, he entertained me so oh yeah oh he's amazing up there oh is it, is it time for the most important question of this entire podcast most important what? Oh, no. the last 
the last 50 minutes or so did not matter. This question will <laughs> dictate the future. Oh, this no. is the most important question. So I don't know if you guys are ready. You guys ready? I'm thing. nervous. I'm really nervous. Is All this right. like is this like the grand finale? This is the this is this is the most important question. I'm gonna judge your entire personality based on this Ooh. one question. Very judgmental when it comes to this question. Wow. Okay. All right, All let's right. do it. All right. What is your favorite scary movie? Oh. oh, you guys. Yeah, you're definitely going to judge me. Uh, you're definitely going to judge me. No way. You just hit me with that. But, uh, I mean, you guys look like more movie geeks, so you guys tell your guys the answers first. You know what? I'll just give you my how – about, how about I'll be the bold one, and I'll just give you my answer. Okay. Thank you, Mike. I'll be, I'll be the rookie here. I'll, I'll, I'll be that. Okay. It's it's got to be the uh, the old the, the classic Halloween movies, Michael. Seventy eight. Let's go. Seventy eight. Yeah. Like, if you the classics. Said, if you would have said Halloween ends, I probably would have ended the Zoom call. Right <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Fuck that. The Halloween ends. <laughs> I would have been very happy if you said that, just because it would have made Tony mad, which makes me happy. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> let's hope. Well, let's get it in there. No, I gotta. Gotta go with the 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 classics. The did classics are, are the scariest. I'm sorry, what was that? Did you go to Horror Nights this year? I did. What, did you like the maze? The maze was amazing. Literally, just Chef's kiss. Just absolutely, no words explained. I, mean, I thought that it was, was Scarecrow, happy. but that's just me. Scarecrow was <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, I didn't go to like Horror Nights this year. You know, Scarecrow, Grimoire, <clears throat> Roaring Twenties. There you go. Yeah. All right, Cheeto and Joe, you got to answer this. Otherwise, <laughs> this podcast doesn't get published. Hey, man. I said <laughs> mine. I said <laughs> mine. Their life. All right. I said mine. Am I allowed to say two because they're kind of different? Sure. Sure. All right, deal. So like I said earlier, I'm a little bitch when it comes to scary things, or at least I used to be. <laughs> but nice one to get me into it. My girlfriend actually showed it to me. Cabin in the Woods. That's a good one. I'm giving him Cabin in the Woods. Because it's just the twist. I was like, wait. No. Yeah. That's funny as fuck. Cabin in the Woods is really good. And all the Easter eggs and all the monsters in there. You got uh, exactly. Because like she said, now go going. back to like that scene where they're in that first room. I'm like, oh, wait. That's nuts and, to me. And, and Chris Hemsworth, the greatest death ever. Oh, I'm going to oh, say God, yeah. Bam. Yep. Got me going. Um, and then the one that was like, actually like, that scared me. That was like, oh shit, that's dark. Hereditary. That's a good one. The Ari Aster one. Damn, not with that. My girlfriend still won't, won't rewatch it. I did like Midsummer, but yeah, Hereditary Midsummer. All right, Cheeto. Spotlight's on you, buddy. <laughs> Dang, you know what? I'm probably going to have like the worst one because I hate it. Like, scary movies scare the fuck out of me. And like, I would never watch them alone. But I could say this the first, <laughs> the first scary movie that I ever witnessed that scared the fuck out of me when I was little was The Hills Have Eyes. Because that's a pretty good movie. It is one. That one like was so freaky to me. Like just me imagining being in those hills alone. Uh uh-uh. nope. Yeah, I'm nope. with you. I can't I can't do that either. Mm. Sammy, what's your favorite horror movie? Uh I don't Uh-oh, know. We're gonna judge so- you. We're in- what? Yeah, I, I we're don't know. I don't- judge your entire personality based off this question. <laughs> <laughs> one question. Here's where the Uh-oh. tables turn. Uh, here's where the table this is where the turns have tabled Uh-oh. um <laughs> um so uh first uh first two movies that come to mind if you've been a fan of the channel um you, you would know these answers no no pressure you guys uh tony is gonna know exactly what i'm about to say the scariest movie i think i've ever seen created is the strangers um because oh. that is the that is the yeah. most realistic terrifying film and this is the reason why i will never move outside of a city because you no, have to yeah. have neighbors because if you do not those mofos are going to show up and kill you not just for any reason their only reason for killing you is because you were home yep, that is all exactly and that is the most absolutely bone chilling movie i've ever seen and the other movie that messed me up 
Once again, Tony's gonna know the answer to this one. Is oh, The Conjuring 2? Oh, I thought you were gonna say us. Actually, us. yeah. I want that one on my list. That one gave me nightmares. Yeah. That one. Like us too. No, I know. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Us is probably my favorite horror movie, but the two movies that scared the absolute oh, poop out of me is going to be uh, The Strangers and The Conjuring 2. Because if The Conjuring Dude. 2 ever happened to me and that nun showed up at the foot of my bed, I would probably just die. I'd be like, I lost. I lost. I'm sorry. I would, I would literally Bro. just end it right now. So yeah, they don't do it for me. Crooked man. The Crooked Man got me bad. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, he was supposed to get a movie and just never got a movie. But it's still gonna happen, I think. Is eventually. I, oh, eventually. God. I mean, they're making a nun too, and nun one wasn't good. Oh shit. That, that is also true. Is this is so the, the crooked. Is the man, movie Saw considered a scary, scary movie? Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Salt. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, cause that one kind of freaks me out too. <laughs> the fact that the fact that the strangers, the first, cause the thing that really freaked me though out because i should have put the strangers on my list too on the that that horror movie but literally the one the thing that freaked me out during the movie was when the very first title card said based on a true story i was like <laughs> no fucking way <laughs> like that this shit kind of happens like that that freaked me out and during watching the movie towards the beginning to end still thinking in my head based on a true story dude i was i was shaking like Oh my god, dude. I was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. don't catch me on a movie alone. Scary movie. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I watched that movie with people with lights on, and that movie still t- absolutely terrifies me. <laughs> Gives me chills. <laughs> yeah, because it's realistic. But we don't want to take any more of your all's time. Uh, we do appreciate you, Joe, Mike, and Cheeto for joining us. Um, if you guys... If, if, if you like this video, go ahead and drop a like down below. Uh, drop a comment down here if any of these guys scared the living poop out of you or if they made you laugh because, uh, you know, we always love the feedback. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, in addition, hit that bell notification so you can get notified for all 20 plus days of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Um, and last but certainly not least, go ahead and like us on Instagram at The Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror, as well as on TikTok at The Knights of Horror, because we got nothing but flames coming your way for the rest of November for Scare Actor Appreciation Month. And if nothing else, we hope you have a great day. Peace. You'll never know my movies because they're going to be a mystery. <laughs> <laughs>